and welcome to the writer's secret book last week i announced that it was prep october we have started we're going for it so what i want to do is i want to take certain topics that i share daily on my instagram account is on the description box down below and i'm gonna make group of videos if that makes sense so today we are going to go a little bit of what prep october is all about and a little bit of yourself as a writer and as well you have my blog down below which covers the same information that i have on my instagram but it covers on a deep longer more detailed version because obviously instagram give us a limit of words and i'm a writer i don't like to have limits on words i just like to put everything out there but let's get on with this prep october if you didn't know is the preparation for nanorimo that is happening on november the first until november the 30th so it's for one month and you are meant to be writing fifty thousand words in one month okay i know so much i don't want to speak about nanorimo a lot because we're going to cover that up at the end of the month and in november especially there are certain things you have to do 100% as a writer to be ready for that unless, which we are going to discuss it in a minute, you are the type of writer that you just like to sit down and then just put everything on a document. I did that. I did that with my first novel, Samuel. I do not suggest you to do that because I learned a lesson. It's not like you have to follow my words. But I can tell you that that is a good and a bad thing, especially if, like me, you're working on a series because it's going to come the time for next book. And because you haven't organized yourself and outlined a single thing, you're just basically going to be absolutely lost and don't know how to continue your series like happens to me. And I brainstorm my brain out in book two and it's been a year and i haven't published the book because i'm not happy with what i've done and i've been studying a lot on how to become a better author and writer and once i read my book i'm like what have you done anyway all of this will depend in the type of writer that you are there are three type of writer that you can be you can be a pantser which means you sit down you write down your full story, you edit it, and it's ready to be published. You don't do any outline. You don't develop at all your characters. You just go on and then you just put everything in there. And then you progress on the journey of that characters and that story and that plot along the time that you are writing. That's a good option. I'm not saying no. I did it as I say. But it has pros and cons on the topic. Okay. Number two will be a plotter which i have become now which means you organize yourself better that's what we're supposed to be doing in prep october and you develop your characters how they should be which by the way that's going to be another video you develop your characters you create your story you create your plot and then from there you start writing there are certain things and certain questions that you're not going to find the answer yet you're going to find it when you are writing, but because you know who your characters are, what their desire, their fear, their misbelief is, where is the story going and where is the plot going and the backstory of your secondary characters going, you can put those things later on in the book. It's absolutely fine. You don't have to have all the answers. And there are certain things that are going to come to you later on during this process of writing journey and it's absolutely fine but you are in control because you know where is this going where is the start where is the middle and where is the end okay the type of writer number three will be a planter, which is a mixture between plotter and panzer what will be is you're gonna do a small outline to make sure like okay this is all the name of all of my characters this is where they live this is more or less how I want the story to start, finish and end, but that will be it. And then that's okay too, because again, you are creating 
a word already and you're gonna develop it as you write. The themes between being a planter and a pantser is that your process of editing and finish that final draft and don't have to rewrite things is just gonna be much harder. When you are a plotter, you are in control on the story and you are gonna follow the three act structure, which again, we're gonna speak on detail of that in another video, but because you know where your story goes, you can come and say, this section is this part. Let, let's just bring it up. Let's say, this is the hook of the story. This is the aha moment. And this is the victory moment. So you have those three in there and then everything makes sense in between. And you can come and be like, okay, I'm going to change this part and I'm going to add some more or I'm going to remove this. And it's going to be way easier because you have your structure prepared from day one, which is what we're doing in Preptober, okay? That's something really important to have prepared because so many people, it's like, I don't want to waste my time outlining. I want to sit down and write. That's absolutely fine. But actually, that you sit down one day and you write a big document, which is a brainstorm, and then you put all your ideas in a document, either you write it or you type it, it doesn't really matter. That's part of outlining as well. And you are sure what are you sharing and where is everything going? And then you chose from there if you want to break that down even more and do a full outlining, being a plotter, or you prefer to be a planter and you prefer to be like, okay, I have the idea more or less ready. I can move along, okay? Those are three type of writers that you have to really consider. I could say the strongest ones are either a plotter or a pantser. A uh, planter has become like a new fashion that a lot of people we really like to call it. So it's just like you are in between. And I get like, if you are writing a standalone, which means just one book and it has a beginning and an end, and then that's it. It's absolutely fine to be a, um, plan a, a pantser over there, but if you're writing a series, a continuation books, uh, books that are gonna be connected somehow or something, it's better to have a proper structure because you want to, don't have to go, it's like, can't you imagine me needing to go to this book page by page and pay attention of what was the eye color of this person and how did they used to talk and when did they show up in the book? All of those marks, is fine for me this one i did it on purpose but this is all the times that stella which is book two shows up on this book and that's fine because i can easily go and be like oh okay these are the moments that i have to share as well on book two but i know how stella look like how stella personality is who else is in stella uh, in samuel book that is gonna be in stella book and it makes sense so i am prepared and for the past few months, you can really imagine the amount of study that I have done to outline my series. And right now I'm in a, this massive self-confident moment, which in me is just a miracle. But I'm in a moment of like, I am in control because at the end of the day, I am the creator of this story. The story doesn't drive me. I drive the story and I tell the story, where is it going? As a planter or as a panzer, you will be like, mm, where was I was going with this? And something else before I go. Write notes, keep them, even you are a panzer, keep them because when you're writing, at some point, maybe while you are writing your book, you will develop a new idea. But at some point, especially when you are reading that book and about to edit that book or you are editing that book, you will want to go back to those notes and see what was your first idea and where are you at today and then make the decision of should I change this? Should I keep what I say in the first time or what I put now? It makes sense and I want to go along with that. That's the two versions of something that you have to keep in mind because sometimes, because the idea is here, you feel you already put it in a book, but you didn't. And that's a big mess because you can end up being like, uh, what am I doing? 
what did I thought the first time? What was that? And I don't know you writers, but me, sometimes these type of dialogues come to me. It's just like I, I'm hearing my, my characters talking behind a door. And if I don't write down that dialogue in the moment, when I go back, even minutes later, and I try to write it down, I can feel I miss some words that came to me when I was hearing behind the door. So keep that in mind as well. I really hope you like this. I'm going to be back next week with all about outlining. I'm going to drive you crazy. So get ready, prepare a notebook for that or prepare any type of documents that you want because we are going to talk about a lot of themes at once. We're going to go in deep detail of what outlining is and how to prepare yourself for outlining. And then the week after, we're going to go all over character profiles and how to develop your characters and everything. So be ready because what it is to come is so excited. I can't wait to share it with you. Thank you so much for passing by. Thank you so much for like these videos. Give us a huge thumbs up if you do. Don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell so you will get notified every time I upload a video, which basically is nearly every day. And <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.